Hi, I'm Brian Lord, Senior Vice President here at Premier Speakers Bureau, and I'm very excited. This is probably one of the more unique interviews we've ever done. I'm excited to have on Laura and Steve, and they have a really unique story. It's kind of uh, girl books boy, boy meets girl, and it, they kind of go on. So a professional event planner yes. who uh, books a speaker for her event, and somehow they fall in love and, and get married, or at least get married. <laughs> something recently. like that, yeah. So, and what we did is we kind of did something different on this one. We, I actually went out to a lot of LinkedIn groups and just said, you know, why would an event planner uh, marry a speaker? So, so going through this, and, and the best response I got was, you know, from, uh, this is from uh, Cindy from Tampa, who's in the BizBash LinkedIn group, said, well, I hope love would have something to do with it. You know, why would that? So just to go through some of the questions, BizBash, you, you folks responded the most, so you get to have the first question. <laughs> so here's the first question from you. Uh, Carol, uh, who's a CMP from New York, um, she said, so, you know, one is how did you, how did this happen in the first place? And then two, how long did it take after the event for for Steve to ask you out? Yeah. Well, um, I was working for a company and um, I had a event about business growth and uh, formulated a list of speakers and brought it to my board and Steve just so happened to be the right one for the for the job and uh, hired him and that was that was year one. Eight years ago? Yeah, yeah. eight years ago, <laughs> yeah. it was eight years ago. And then uh, he did such a great job on the event, and our members gave such positive feedback that I brought him back a second year, and uh, it had <laughs> so nothing. There was nothing in the in the in the first year. It was just a, you know an event, and it was successful. Right. But then second Early event, professional, seven years ago. Yeah. Had nothing to do with the fact that he was cute. <laughs> 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 what what sort of made you, made you turn the corner from from just business to to whatever else? Well, during the second event, I think, or the second year, um, we, you know, at the end of the event, the, it was a lunch meeting, and um, speakers and event planners don't eat during the event. You mm -hmm. wait until afterwards. So, at the end of the event, we're sitting at the table, we're talking, um, you know, it's cold chicken. <laughs> and <laughs> You know what is really funny? Uh, yeah, that's, did uh, Greg from BizBash said, did, did Laura just give him a cold sandwich? <laughs> so, so cold wow. chicken afterwards, yeah. Laura's company did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I shared the cold chicken with him. Oh, okay. also, so, but we connected there, I think. Yeah, we found we had a lot in common. And, and uh, it makes sense. We're in similar industry. We understood some of the same things. Being here, it was in Nashville, by the way. Mm -hmm. We were in the Nashville area today and so uh, it was about music and about it's same taste in music that sort of food. thing. Mm -hmm. food believe it or not uh, restaurants <laughs> and, and uh, it kind of had a lot in common besides just the professional and he was a really good speaker too. <laughs> he was a really good speaker a, I know that's one of the other ones. a persuasive speaker <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even at lunch now um, this one is from Molly who is in de business development uh, in Milwaukee she said to ask Steve if there were any pet peeves about event planners that he shared with Laura that ended up changing the way he does things. And then she said, can you ask <laughs> Laura the same thing? So what are some of the pet peeves that, we'll start with Steve first, because that's how Molly that's a good asked. Quest, you know, um, I get asked that question a lot, believe it or not. You know, meeting planners will ask me that, or just people in general. Uh, and I'm ha always hesitant to answer, because on the most part, I don't have any, right? But if forced with a gun to head to say, <laughs> is there a pet peeve? I would say the main one is, because it just happened to be last week, so it's very top of mind. Uh -huh. Is it Molly? Is that right? Yeah. Molly. Molly, you would never do this, I'm sure. <laughs> but other meeting planners, sometimes new, um, uh, they are not aware that there's never been a 15-minute break in the history of meetings. <laughs> I had 800 people in a meeting recently. I look at the agenda in the morning, and I'd seen the agenda before, and it had been 30, mm -hmm. and they had to put more things in. Mm -hmm. It came at 50. You cannot get 800 people out of a room and back into the room in 15 minutes, let alone coffees, restrooms, telephone messages. So if there is a pet peeve, it would be the 15 minute break, the two, even the 20 minute break for an audience of that size. Maybe with 50 people, we just uh, we just came from New Orleans with an event, 50 people is a very small, intimate group of CEOs. In that case, sure, 15, 20 minutes you can make happen. But uh, so yeah, 15 minute break is probably my only really pet peeve. It does happen more than you might think. Mm -hmm. Laura? Well, um, <laughs> sometimes the speaker forgets that the event is not just about him. Now, for me, <laughs> or, as her. The, or her, <laughs> for me, the event planner, um, it's, you know, it's about the awards dinner, it's about registration, it's about uh, many more details than just the speaker. And 
I think sometimes the speaker forgets that, and then if we can both remember that, that we have the same overall goal, makes things easier to work with. And, um, you know, two months ago when you contacted me, you're going on at 11, you're still going on at 11, and if anything changes, I will be certain to email you. And so the constant calling and asking the same questions, that can be a pet peeve sometimes too. <laughs> but I'll get off my high horse. Do <laughs> <laughs> the speakers call you a lot and ask the same questions? Really? That, that used to happen? Interesting. Sometimes. Sometimes. I sometimes. believe sometimes. that. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now this is, this is kind of funny. This is from MPI, from MPI's uh, uh, meeting, uh, meeting and event discussion group. Uh, Marion, uh, she's from Ontario, Canada. Now, this is this is kind of funny. Um, she said, "Can you ask Laura if Steve's communication skills were part of the attraction?" So, is, is talking sexy? I don't know if that's the uh, the right way to put well, it. Well, uh, he definitely had a nice sounding voice, <laughs> um, and you know, he's just a really responsive speaker. And uh, in in the time that we worked professionally together, that was a big part of why I liked him so much. Is he was authentic. The same guy that I saw on stage was the same guy that uh, I was talking to on the phone and the same voice I heard in his books that mm -hmm. I read through his books. So it was uh, the authenticity of Steve that really I liked professionally and personally. <laughs> yeah. And then to sw switch it around, um, what, what professional strengths of hers, uh, Marion asked, were, were part of the attraction to her? First thing that comes by my Brian, is uh, conscientiousness. Uh -huh. Um, it's it's nice to have a life partner who's conscientious as opposed to the opposite. And so meeting planners on the whole tend to be detail-oriented, empathetic, care about details, making things happen for others, whether it be family, friends. So, so yes, it's I saw that type of professionalism, mm -hmm. but it carries over to our personal life that she's very conscientious when it comes to family and home and taking care of our, our lives. So, yes, there, there's, a I think, a commonality there. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, this is uh, one of our international questions. This is from Who's Who in Events. Uh, Mr. Holland, who is in Holland, I actually don't know his real name. Oh, really? That's, that's his, uh, I guess, his <laughs> avatar. But, um, you know, uh, why did you go with this speaker instead of another one? And how did you stay in contact? It was as if the sky parted <laughs> and Steve floated down on the cloud from speaker heaven. With a harp. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, um, you know, it was, there's no secret here, really. Uh -huh. um, he, his expert was, his expertise was in, or is in, small business growth and how to grow your business, and that's the event that I was running. And his uh, website was really easy to share with board members. I mean, there's, real, there's really no secret here other than he was the best fit for my event. And uh, he was just, again, really authentic and easy to work with clearly cared about more than just himself, which is always good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is kind of one of the funny ones. This is, this is for you again. But um, I am popular. <laughs> I know, you're very popular. They don't really care about Steve. He's just window dressing. I knew that was going to happen. He's yeah. very uh, interesting. He really <laughs> is. <laughs> uh, now, this is from Shelly, who's the president of Events Company in Seattle. Um, she's with Event Profs, which is Alex, our, our uh, creative guy here. It's his favorite group is Event Profs. But uh, anyway, so she and actually Dora is another person uh, had a similar question, but I'll use Shelly's. It's a little more detailed. Um, she, her husband is a radio personality and was asked to be an MC at an event that she was planning. Mm -hmm. so, so she starts off and she's very much game for it, but then felt a whole lot more pressure than she normally did. Uh, and then also she wasn't sure how to react of like telling her husband where to go and what to do and everything else because it was hard. So, how, so I guess the first question that's in here is, have you ever booked him or had him as a speaker since you've been married? And how did you handle that from sort of a logistical standpoint? Well, I would say um, mostly the events that we've worked together very closely, besides speaking events, are community-based. Mm -hmm. And so they are things for our community, um, for our kids' schools, for things like that. And so mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier when you're um, working for a higher purpose or when you're working for something um, bigger than you. And so, you know, we, we haven't really had any 
problems working together. And I find that in general, really, that speakers and meeting planners don't have a ton of problems together or... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I find that sometimes there's this idea there's an adversarial role mm -hmm. or something. I've just never found that. Mm -hmm. Are there bad days? I was just with another speaker who was having a bad day with a meeting planner. Mm -hmm. But it had a lot more to do with what happened prior to getting there, I think. And so uh, this idea that uh, we're at cross-purposes, I've just never seen it. I, it's normally, what can I do to help? And they feel the same way. And it's both doing a dance of what can we do to help one another. We do it all the time. What can I do to help you? When it comes to us working together on events now, it tends to be um, a non-paid event. Mm -hmm. right? So right. we're working on something, as she said, to a greater good. Um, uh, so. Uh, 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 when it is a paid event, we haven't actually done that together. We're on the same team, literally. We're, we're showing up as the speaker team right. uh, when we do events so together. So we're working with event planners, and we just communicate really well together, yeah. and that's key. Yeah, we've learned how to not uh, step on each other's business. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> that works out well. And, and I always apologize. No, <laughs> Well, sounds good. Well, uh, for, for you event planners watching this, uh, this is uh, sort of the, the back story here, but we did want to um, uh, tap into Laura and Steve's expertise from sort of the event planning side of things on very specifics on how uh, event planners and speakers can work together uh, to have a great event. So make sure to tune in to this channel, uh, subscribe to this channel, and uh, watch out for more videos. So thanks so much for coming on and being here. Thank thanks you for, for having yeah. us.